Good morning. Just piggybacking off of uh, what Mr. Robert Taylor said this morning, I have the privilege of introducing uh, our two speakers this morning. Uh, first one, as, as was mentioned, is, is Richard Baggett. So Sunset uh, the International Bible Institute is a place that we've had a relationship with here at, at Waterview for many, many years. I know many members here have some personal relationships with Sunset. My, my in-laws actually are the deans of the Cambodian Bible Institute, which is a satellite school of Sunset in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Um, so we, we've had a, a long-standing relationship with Sunset and specifically with Richard for the last five or six years uh, with this solar player program that we're really excited for you guys to hear about. So we thank Richard and, and his wife for being here this morning. And following Richard again, as was mentioned, uh, Lenin Munguia is going to be, be speaking. Uh, he's had some, some real first-hand experience with uh, the second and third generation Latino congregations in Memphis, Tennessee. And he's going to help um, lay out the, this vision and this hope that we as a missions community, as a church here in Waterview, hope to institute in the future. Thank you. Good morning. I know what you're thinking, especially Lenine, but don't worry, I'll be as brief as possible in the next 45 minutes or so. I've been asked to say a few words about the Solar Player Project that Waterview was, was a charter member of, and then following that, just a few comments about the special contribution for missions that you're going to have on October the 21st. I was told a story as, as fact, I was told, uh, that this happened in Africa. There was a missionary in Africa, one of the nations in Africa, and as part of his ministry, he was out on the street handing out Bibles. And he handed a Bible to a guy, and the guy took it, and he fell to the pages, and he said, this is really, really fine paper. I'm going to use it to roll my cigarettes. So the missionary said, it's between you and God what you do with his word that I'm giving you. All I ask is that you read it before you use it. And they parted company. So several years later, the missionary was at a mission conference. He was walking down the hall. They had several meetings going on in different rooms. He walked past the doorway of this room, and he heard a voice that that voice sounds familiar. Stuck his head in, and it was the guy that he had handed the Bible to, and he was telling his story, and he said, this missionary gave me the Bible. I said, this is really fine paper. I'm using it to roll my cigarettes. He said, please read it before you use it. I did. He said, I smoked Matthew, Mark, and Luke, <laughs> but by the time I read John, I became a believer. <laughs> well, what if you couldn't read? What if that man couldn't read? There's 774 million adults in the world that can't read their own language. They're not dumb, they just never had a chance to go to school. So several years at Sunset, True Day, dear, the president called some people in, he said, we are not doing a good enough job to reach those that are the most remote. They are the ones that are most left out when it comes to receiving the gospel. How are we gonna do that? Long story short, guy came back with one of these. This is a totally solar-powered audio player that has, depending on the language, four to five hundred hours of Bible and Bible teaching. The entire Bible, all of Sunset's courses, All World Bible School, New Life Behavior, two and a half to three hours of hymns, and more Bible teaching. We've been handing these around. I'd like to show you a short, less than six-minute video, and it's going to kind of real quickly chronicle where we started and kind of what happened, I mean, really quickly, we'll go to the Philippines where we are now, and you're going to see who it was that received number 10,000. We crossed the 10,000 mark earlier this year. And then following that, uh, I'll make a couple of comments and then uh, give it to Lenine. I'm particularly pleased to be here because this was a new idea. This had never been done before. We thought it was a good idea, but it had never been done. It had to be proven. And so we went to some key people to start with and said, would you be willing to step out in faith and help fund something that if it works, it's going to be like nothing that's been done before, but it might not work because it's new. Waterview was one of the first, your charter members of what you're about to see. So I invite you, let's watch this short video, then I'll have a couple of comments.
We got sun. So the solar would be the best thing that we can have in Ethiopia. In the countryside, there is no electricity. Uh, they don't have any power. But you can imagine, but God has given us a, the, really the power, the light. Remember, these preachers will go out, walk miles to preach the gospel. But when you put something special like the solar player in their hand, that will make them walk not 10 miles what they used to do every single day. So that's just a piece of cake, but 20, 30 miles. Quiero decirles, hermanos, que el papiro a mí eh, me ha servido, me está sirviendo para mi aprendizaje, para mi aprendizaje bíblico, ya que eh, soy no vidente y ahora pues me cuesta mucho para poder aprender. Santo Espíritu, yo te adoro. Santo Espíritu, yo te adoro. Santo Espíritu, yo te adoro, aleluya, aleluya. Siento alegre, verdad, que Dios me ha dado este regalo para nosotros aquí, orientar toda mi familia también y enseñarla a ellos también, o explicarle. The difficulties that we have here is having church workers coming in to help because of the mountain region, you know, you, you have to walk so far, all the trails. It multiplies our preaching capacity. The solar player would be uh, something that uh, we can introduce to the next generation, the younger generation. In the Philippines, there are young professionals who are not trained in Bible schools like me, like Ed Mark. If we are unable to go to Bible school, then the solar play here is essentially a Bible school in itself.
How, almost everyone in here has studied the book of Philippians. In the fourth chapter, verse 17, Paul writes what is, in essence, a thank you note to the church for the gift they sent. And he said something really interesting. He said, this gift that you sent me, I'm paraphrasing here, has allowed me to do many things. And by the way, I bring you greetings from Caesar's household. That's how far we've been able to take the gospel. And then Paul, in essence, says, this gift is to your account. In other words, what happens through my efforts to spread the gospel, you're just as much a part of that as I am because you supplied the resources. It's right here in Philippians. And as you think about October 21st and the gift that you're preparing to make, I'd like to say two things real quickly before Lenine comes and gives the sermon. We do this a lot. Not only at Waterview, we're about to do it at Southside and Fort Worth, other places around the world. And I'd like to communicate that so many times we don't really get to see or really get to know the difference that it makes. Alfonso lives in the Philippines in a small village up in the mountains. I have it on video, so I didn't make it on this. Alfonso, by his own admission, was the town drunk. When we went to interview and film Alfonso, we had to navigate around men laying in the street that were passed out. Alfonso used to be one of those. Then he got a solar player, and he listened to it night and day, and he said, it transformed me. And he's now an active member of the small church in his town serving in God's name. There's a slide that I hope will come up right away. Uh, won't have time to tell you all about this. And Carlo? And Carlo's not a big name preacher. And Carlo is dedicated, he's committed, but he got a solar player and he took it back to his village in Ethiopia. And the slide says so far they're up to 350 baptisms. The most recent count is it's 500 people in his village that have become members of the church. They've got a congregation in his village almost the size of this one. I'm not representing that every place the solar player goes, we have that kind of response, but a lot is happening. Thousands and thousands are being reached around the world. And then there was the Muslim father who was accidentally given a solar player by a friend of his. He listened to it, and he came to faith, and he taught his two children, 21 and 22, and they showed up at church unannounced one Sunday morning and said, we've been listening, we want to be baptized. And then they walked back to their village. And on and on it's going around the world. By the way, Edwin is the name of the Indian on the, when we approached the, the landing there in that village out. I mean, I, I thought Tarzan was going to show up any minute. We were out in the, it was way, way out in the jungle. Crocodiles and all, for, for real. So Edwin comes out. Edwin is actually the spiritual leader of that village. The chief is converted, but Edwin's the spiritual leader. And he said, I was just living in darkness. He said, I didn't know. Now I've totally changed his life, and you see some of the results. So I'd just like to share with you, your gifts are going to make a difference. They already are, and they're going to do a lot more. So this is not the same old, same old activity. This is eternal. I've got so many stories. I'm not going to tell them all today. Invite me back sometime. I'll tell you stories that will bring you out of your seat about what God is doing around the world, how he is moving ahead of us to bring his people. But because of your gifts, because of what's done with them, people around the world literally are praising God. I'm going to give you one illustration out of a list. In Ethiopia, not far from where Carlos village is, is the Muslim section of Ethiopia. And in one of the villages there, and we don't know why, we don't know why, but a lot of the children there have club feet. And even as teenagers and in their 20s, their parents have to drag them around to go anywhere. And so the parents went to the village leaders, the imams, said, well, we need some help. Our children have no future. And the response from the imams was, no, we're not going to help you. Obviously, your Allah has cursed you. There's your evidence, your children's club feet. And, and, and then they derisively said, 
If you want help like that, go talk to those Jesus people. And they did. One of whom was Habtu, who you heard on the video. And so our brethren put together a program where they bring the children in, the parents of the children, and they provide all the funding for complete surgery and crutches, whatever they need, braces, rehab, all the way from where they being drug around to where they can walk and run in God's <clears throat> In God's name. I watched the Muslims. In fact, in the first picture where the tent was, you can't see from that picture, but at the first, out of 800, almost 800 people there, the first hundred in the front were Muslims that had walked from that village to say thank you. And to praise God. Your gifts are making a difference. Thank you. Dios te bendiga. Good morning and God bless. I need to turn on two switches uh, today. The first one is the microphone and the second is from Spanish to English. That's what I, I was telling the guys in the back end. Uh, it's, it's really great to be here and thank you, uh, Richard, for uh, the wonderful uh, work that Sunset is doing around the world. And it, it is a blessing to know that um, the, the Word of God is able to reach many nations and languages around the world with this small device. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for the generous gift of uh, many Christians around the world. And for the Mungias, it is a blessing to be here this morning. Uh, my wife and our son Mateo um, are uh, have had a relationship with uh, Waterview since 2011 when um, Dr. Howard Norton introduced us to this church. Back then I was uh, in Memphis attending the Harding School of Theology, uh, working my uh, master's degree, and uh, I met Greg Parks, by the way, and during an intensive uh, course there back in 2012, I think. And so, um, we have had a relationship that has blessed me and my family in so many ways uh, during my um, studies in Memphis. Also, during that time, uh, my family and I were involved in uh, Latino Hispanic ministry in Memphis, and uh, Waterview supported that. Uh, then, back in 2014, I started teaching at the Baxter Institute in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, uh, and uh, they had a student body representing uh, more than 60 students from all over Latin America. So this morning, Jim Alexander was talking about spiritual influence in his class and uh, the influence of this church uh, and through their support, me and my family has uh, reached many uh, during my ministry and I've received grace as well and this is something I, I love about this church this church is very generous and it's a very not only welcoming church but loving and caring church supporting church and God has blessed you with many gifts and so it's it is an honor to be here for me and my family this morning I want you to please turn to Acts 13 and I'm going to build on the good work that uh, both uh, Robert Taylor and uh, Jason Moon did a couple Sundays ago, talking about the mission of the church is about salvation. And sometimes that mission takes crossing a forbidden threshold that requires a vision of God to reach uh, many, many other people. So uh, if you'd please turn to Acts 13 and uh, to verse 46, I'm going to be reading from the NIV. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, 
We have to speak the word of God to you first, since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And uh, this is, uh, look, and this is very interesting, he's quoting Isaiah 49, verse 6, uh, where God in the exile in Babylon is uh, raising a servant that is going to be able to bring salvation, hope, and deliverance to Israel during exile. And uh, Luke says that during uh, the ministry of apostles Paul and Barnabas, God is acting, God is ma making himself manifest, God is revealing himself again in the ministry of uh, Paul and Barnabas in Pisidia and Antioch to the Gentiles. And this is very interesting because um, Luke sees in this chapter the ministry of these apostles as a continuation of the ministry of the servant in Isaiah and the ministry and a continuation of the ministry of Jesus in the Gospels. So there is a connection there. And Isaiah 49 serves to uh, underscore that connection. And the connection is God is acting. God is manifesting himself through the ministry of his servant. So the servant is a very important topic here for Luke. And um, in other words, Luke is saying that in Pisidian Antioch, God is revealing his will for the Gentiles through Paul and Barnabas. And this takes discernment for the church. God is manifesting himself. God is revealing himself. And the church needs to have awareness. The church needs to have discernment. Where do we find God revealing himself? Of course, in the scripture. But God is also manifesting, revealing himself in our lives and in our city, in the nation, in the world. How do you perceive God acting that way? The way Luke sees this is that God is lifting, bringing up a servant to fulfill his will, in this particular case, to the ends of the earth, uh, like Richard was talking about uh, the mission uh, that the Sunset Bible Institute has. Well, guess what? Uh, my family and I were driving around town. We lost our way to a certain place yesterday. And as we were driving around the city, I couldn't uh, help but notice that there are uh, many diverse communities in the city, as you perceive. So one block, we were uh, at this huge Asian market. Uh, then there was this uh, Vietnamese, Korean, a lot of Asian communities around the city. And then a few blocks from that place, Hindus. And then finally, to the place where we're gonna have uh, lunch, uh, a Mexican, a Mexican restaurant. Although let me let me clarify on that. Believe it or not, I'm not Mexican, and uh, something that uh, we need to know is that the Latino community is very diverse as well, and so this cultural diversity has come to your city. One more than 1.3 million people live in this area, in the city of Dallas, and about 44% of those 1.3 million people are Latinos. Think about that. The nations have come to your city. You don't have to go to the ends of the earth to reach them. I will say that the ends of the earth have come to the city of Dallas. The mission field is right here. And so if the nations have come to Dallas, and God is raising, God needs his servant to communicate his will, to bring and become a light of salvation to the nations, who is that servant in Dallas? 
In the first century, Paul and Barnabas and their ministry in Pisidia and Antioch, Luke saw that as the fulfillment and the extension of uh, the promises of God in Isaiah. And the way I see it now, and this is what, what I, I want you to be with me on this, is that God's servant in Dallas to reach and to become a light for the nations that have gathered here in this city is the church at Waterview. This church is God's servant to reach the nations that have gathered in this city, including 44% Latino populations. And so if, if this, this is a very welcoming, Waterview is a very welcoming church, and this, this, this task, this mission, requires gifts that you already have. Welcoming, friendly. Because Latinos, second and third generation Latinos, are different from first generation Latinos. A good example of that is Tony Romo. You all know Tony Romo. His third Latino generation, Mexican ancestry. You will find second and third generation Latinos almost everywhere in the city. They go to your schools. As a matter of fact, UTD has almost 4,000 Latinos enrolled in their undergrad programs, just a few blocks from here. Think about the opportunities of reaching out to them by answering God's calling of going and reaching to the nations. And so um, there is an opportunity to start a second and third English-speaking Latino ministry with Waterview and the Munguias. Um, and I, will, I, I, I have to thank the missions committee. This is their vision. Um, and we, we've, we've talked about it. We've met to discuss details about it. And I will be happy if you have specific questions about this ministry. Please uh, contact me after the service or get my contact information. I would love to talk more about this. But the way I see it is that you have 239 languages spoken in the area of Dallas. 239 languages. So when God says, go into the world and preach, preach the gospel, preach the good news about Jesus, he doesn't say preach it just in English, preach it just in Spanish, but just go and preach. And when you go and preach and you find that the nations have gathered here around, around this area, the Word of God is challenging us to go and become God's servant to the nation. And so I think that Waterview is very well equipped with spiritual leaders, elders, deacons, teachers, staff, ministers who are able, who are equipped who have the vision of leading this church into this particular ministry. And I thank God for that. And I want you, and I want you to reflect on the following. What is the message of the gospel? When you turn to Romans, in Romans 15, and when you turn to Romans 15, Verses 7 through 9. And I'm going to be reading again from the NIV. The message of the gospel in Romans. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For Paul in Romans, the message of the gospel 
as explained in Romans 1, 15 through 17, the power of God for salvation is that in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, God has accepted both Jews and Gentiles only through faith in Jesus Christ. And so from both groups, God has made a new humanity fashioned according to our Lord Jesus. And so this is the message that second and third generation Latinos need to hear because I'm going to give you an example of who is a second generation Latino in the U.S. and why it's so difficult for them to find a place to call church, call home. Um, Mateo, Mateo is here. Mateo is my five-year-old son. And uh, we've been uh, since July here. So he's more aware of his surroundings now. And just a couple of weeks ago, he started saying that, I don't want you to talk to me in Spanish anymore. Talk to me in English only. And I said, wow, well, just English. Just, just do English, Dad. And he's speaking up English real fast. And you see the thing with second and third generation Latinos is that they are U.S. born. They go to your schools. They pledge allegiance to the U.S. flag. And they welcome U.S. culture on the one hand. And on the other hand, their parents, who are first generation Latinos, um, will encourage them to not lose uh, their Spanish, their Hispanic heritage. Uh, you keep the Spanish, we will keep speaking Spanish, we'll do things like just we did back home and uh, wherever home is, Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras, wherever that is. And so, they live in the hyphen, second and third generation Latinos, the uh, children of first generation Latinos, because they do not fail 100% at home at a Spanish-speaking church. And Waterview is really good at that. There is a uh, Hispanic group meeting here in, in uh, Spanish. We've been there before. It's a great group doing great things. But second and third generation Latinos are the fastest minority group growing at an accelerated pace, both in California and in Texas. And they are not being reached. They are unchurched. So I see Waterview facing this unique opportunity to reach the second and third generation Latinos in the area, partnering with uh, the Munguias, the missions committee, to launch God's calling to accept one another in Jesus Christ, just as God has accepted and welcomed us through faith in Jesus Christ. So this is the message I want to share with you, and this is what God is doing. I see God doing this in the city of Dallas. He has brought about different uh, cultures, different nations, and they are right at your doorstep, and no one is reaching out to them. So the question for you to ponder this morning is, will Waterview accept God's calling of becoming God's servant in this generation, in this city, to reach out to second and third and third generation Latinos? Let's, let's pray for that, and... Um, Thank you, and may God complete, com continue to bless you as you have blessed many through your gift. Thank you.